I'm Ralph Johnson at uh, Perkins and Will Architects in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I'm the International Director of Design, which means I uh, have management responsibilities for bringing the designers together uh, two or three times a year. So we do a lot of international work. We have offices in Shanghai, more recently acquired an office in London. We also just uh, brought in a firm into our organization in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's uh, another expanding market in the world. So we're pretty much covered, <laughs> covering the entire world, I guess. Um, it's important because it creates uh, a sense of place, which I think is critical for an architecture in general that, uh, that inspires people. Uh, we do a lot of schools, for instance, and I think the architecture is part of the learning experience. Uh, things, just simple things like daylighting or not daylighting will improve the learning process. You know? So there's, there's studies done that, that improve that. But, Beyond that, I think it's just the spirit of the place, the uplift uh, of architecture and, and how that can uh, enhance your daily life. I think that's really what great architecture has always been about. In the case of the project in Angola, that was uh, 12 years ago, and uh, we were approached by Indiana University to design a campus from scratch. We had long discussions for a year and then finally decided to take on the project. Initially, we did a master plan phase, which is the overall, it has a very large piece of land outside of Luanda, so you have to do a kind of a land plan, a plan that will probably cover the university for the next 30 years in terms of its growth. We designed the building as a kind of system. So the second phase is mostly taking the same system that we already detailed and then ex expanding it with some differences. There are some bigger labs, that so we have to come up with some some conditions that we didn't have in the first phase. But a lot of the work in the second phase is just simply taking the system that we developed in the first phase and extending it. Part of the, the whole concept of the building was integrating multidisciplinary architecture and engineering to come up with a building that really was uh, where the form of the building was part of the environmental response. So the integration of mechanical engineering, environmental engineering, and architecture, and landscape, all at the same time at the beginning. This is a, a model of the uh, Angola University. The model is the critical section of the universe, typical university classroom, which has the idea of, of using the building as an environmental energy source. So, so the building structure itself is simple concrete frame. There are classrooms with outdoor corridors. And the idea is to cross-ventilate all the classrooms in the university. So the, the, the fact that they're single-loaded means you can have daylight come from both sides of the classroom. You can draw air through the classroom on both levels. And then this roof protects the building, also expands uh, over a courtyard. So there are outdoor courtyards that are protected from the sun. But also the solar shade acts as uh, an airfoil, so the shape of the, of the, uh, the roof actually creates positive negative pressure and helps to draw air from one side to the other. We spent quite a bit of time with the engineer in London uh, calibrating the roof's uh, angle and the design of the roof to allow this to happen. Every office has a uh, uh, number of architects and a uh, kind of group sustainable group and every office, every, all the 25 offices have those groups embedded in the office. They're responsible for uh, l looking at new technologies because it's constantly changing all the time. And then uh, representatives from each uh, group, each office, get together a couple times a year in a kind of firm-wide uh, group to talk about what they've learned and what they're doing for the building. So, uh, so it's really uh, very important part of the organization of the office and the day-to-day. -day.